Yes, yes, people, welcome to the video. Today we're gonna to talk about why rich people stay rich, and hopefully it's gonna be pretty interesting. Who knows, you can tell me at the end of the video, but at least I wanna try and get some kind of basic grasp on things so that should we ever become fortunate enough to be rich ourselves, then we can at least attempt to stay that way, right? That would be ideal, wouldn't it? So let's just get into the video. The first reason that rich people stay rich is that making money is easier when you already have money. That is a simple fact, and it is true on any scale. Making money is easier if you start with hundred pound than if you start with zero it's easier again if you start with a thousand compared to a hundred and it's easier again if you start with a million compared to a thousand and all the way up so rich people actually already have the money that they can put to work for them some people in fact are so rich that they can solely live on the interest of their money without actually ever touching the original amount take for example someone who's got 100 million pounds in the stock market they might be getting an average of seven percent return on that and so they've got seven million pounds per year to live off without eating into that original 100 million now 100 million is a lot even if you've got 10 million right then you've got 700,000 to live off every year so if you've got 1 million you've got 70,000 to live up you can still do that very very comfortably but it's not just the stock market of course rich people can also afford to invest in startup businesses in return for a cut of future profits so you may have heard the term angel investor and this is exactly what they do so there might be literally zero work to do on their part apart from of course identifying businesses that are worth investing in aside from that it's simply a case of giving somebody else money to get their company off the ground and then you will take a cut of future future profits sometimes forever that is pretty powerful even a small percentage in a company that goes on to become very successful is going to give you an insane return and if you have money and assets you'll also find it much easier to get mortgages which you can then leverage get more mortgages and build up a property portfolio having put down very little money in the first place so your access to loans and other credit is also greatly increased now the second reason that rich people stay rich is that they are much more tax efficient so you might think that rich people pay more in taxes and maybe new numerically as a raw quantitative figure they do but proportionally often they actually don't and that's because they can afford expensive accountants who can use every legal trick and loophole in the book to reduce their tax bill they might even also venture into the realms of you know that gray area that's between legal and illegal what is it who knows it's certainly frowned upon and it's certainly uh, somewhat immoral in cases right where they might have offshore accounts that hide some of their wealth they might own property or other assets through shell companies that are registered in tax havens that's probably a whole another elaborate topic for another video and let me know if you want me to talk about that because i will i think it's super interesting right but the point is that they can hide the ownership of assets from the tax man therefore they don't end up having to pay tax on them now even the less questionable practices can get people a long way right if you own a company then you can write off a lot of your living expenses as company expenses provided they are some way related to the functioning of the company so if i've got to go to new york for a business meeting i can fly first class i can stay wherever i want right i don't have to get an economy ticket and stay in the holiday inn right there's no law about that and then i can just write off those expenses against my company profits so that means that although the company will pay for them the company's corporation tax only gets calculated based off retained profits so they come out pre-tax right so any expenses like that do reduce the company's corporation tax and also the individual getting some benefit from those is you know saving a lot of their own personal money now again there's gray areas with that what is legit to claim for what isn't but let me just tell you a lot of people get away with a lot of stuff right now also since income Income tax rates are higher than dividend tax and also capital gain tax a lot of people will try and seek out ways in which they can take their income as a capital gain or as a dividend rather than just as sole income tax now if you're just working at McDonald's or something you're on PAYE then you don't really have the option to take money in dividends right and often this is perfectly legit in fact it's common sense in fact you're probably stupid if you're not doing this in some way if you're actually capable of doing it right finally there are ways and means to get around inheritance tax if you plan far enough ahead and have the right advice on it the third reason rich people stay rich is actually more down to social factors than financial ones so being rich will just automatically open doors that might not otherwise be open for you you might meet people at a local charity fundraiser event you might meet people through business you might just live in a rich area where other rich people live and you might meet them at the local tennis club or polo club or whatever rich people do right essentially your opportunities for 
for networking are far greater than they would otherwise be. And this also extends generationally because let's say you send your son or daughter to a private school, obviously they're gonna go there, make friends with other kids from wealthy families and thus increase their long-term prospects for getting in the right circles. You know, some people say it's not what you know, it's who you know and whilst I certainly don't want to encourage people to use it as an excuse because although other people might be advantaged in certain ways, it certainly doesn't make things impossible for you. It is very powerful, right? You only have to look at schools like Eton, right? 20 of our prime ministers went to the same school. So you might think, well, they're just prime ministers, just politicians, and they're not necessarily rich people. But A, it still shows the power of networking and how they can all channel people into these same areas of life. And B, look at them, they all are pretty rich, to be honest. And actually, when you look at their net worths, most of them tend to be rich beyond what you would expect for the actual salaries that politicians get paid, right? 80K, I think, if you're an MP, and 120 or 150 if you're the prime minister, yet they all have net worths in the millions, multiple millions, a lot of them, and so um, they're getting rich somehow, right? Another reason rich people stay rich is because they invest much more safely. So in general, riskier investments are associated with a higher potential upside or higher potential for returns on that investment. Now, rich people are already rich. They don't need to take that risk. And often, investing is more about avoiding losses than it is about making huge gains, right? And so they don't need the get rich quick scheme. They can avoid that and make safe investments. Now, they can also afford to diversify their investments between different asset classes. So, of course, the average Joe can stick some money in an index fund and consider himself somewhat diversified, but only in regards to stocks and shares. But it's not just your equities that you need to think about, right? If you're gonna be fully diversified, then you need to have a proportion of your wealth in many different asset classes. So not just stocks and shares, but potentially bonds, maybe property, maybe precious metals and commodities, whatever else, right? And so, of course, Joe Bloggs can open a stocks and shares ISA and drip some money into it, but you can't really get the same exposure to the property market, for example, and also the costs involved with holding actual physical gold and silver, such as the insurance and the money to store it, and even the VAT on silver might be somewhat prohibitive if he's only doing it on a small scale compared to somebody who had loads of money and could do it on a bigger scale, they would get obviously proportional discount due to an economies of scale. Finally, in a lot of ways, the cost of living can actually end up lower when you have more money, right? And there are many reasons for that. One is that rich people can often afford to pay for the things that they want outright. So they're never forced into getting loans or getting credit of any form if they don't really want to. For example, if they wanna buy a house, maybe they can just buy the house in cash and they don't have to actually get a mortgage on it. That would mean that they pay the actual sale price rather than paying the sale price plus interest for 25 years. Now, they might not always choose to do that because they might be making a better percentage interest on their investments than the cost of the mortgage, in which case it would make sense to keep your money, make that money off your investments and then correctly pay off the mortgage. But the point is, the option is always there and it doesn't just go for mortgages, right? It's anything they want. They will never be forced into getting credit and paying any interest if they don't want to. Now, they're also able to save money by buying things in bulk or paying for stuff like subscriptions or insurance all in one go rather than splitting the cost down into smaller payments. So for example, let's say you pay your car insurance. It's always cheaper if you pay it off for the year rather than paying it off monthly, right? And stuff like that might seem small, it might seem relatively insignificant. It's certainly not gonna be the difference between being rich and being poor, right? But it is just another example of how living expenses can reduce when you actually have more money. Now, another thing is that rich people who spend a lot can build up a lot of rewards on credit cards. So let's say I'm some rich dude, I spend 10K, 20K, 30K a month, right? And I choose to put it all on a credit card that gives me rewards, whether it's air miles, whether it's points, whether it's cash back, whatever it is, right? Let's say I put it on an Amex, then I can spend all the money I want every month. And as long as I pay off the balance, in full, I never pay interest on that. However, I have all these points that I can use for hotel rooms, flights, and whatever else I can possibly redeem them for. So that is also another way that being rich is actually reducing the cost of living for me. Not me personally, obviously, but you know, rich people. Now, I'm sure there are lots of other reasons why rich people stay rich. And if you can think of any off the top of your head that I haven't actually mentioned, then by all means, stick them in the comments and I will thoroughly enjoy reading them. So just before we go, a couple of things to mention. First thing, when I say rich people, I just mean it like matter of factly, completely objectively. I'm not using it as any kind of like insult or derogatory term. I just mean people with a lot of money, right? Just as if I said poor people, it wouldn't be an insult. It just means people with not that much money, right? I'm gonna be saying that a lot in 
the next video. So I actually think that politicians these days are pretty, you know, hypocritical in the sense that they go on talking about unity and like division and stuff. And then they do quite a good job of actually pitching like poor people and rich people against each other as if one of them is like the enemy or the devil, right? We're all just people with different amounts of money and rich people don't know how poor people would act if they were rich and poor people don't know how rich people would act if they were poor, etc. You know what I'm trying to say, right? Also, I don't think there's anything wrong with basically anything that I've mentioned in this video, with the only exception of the actual like illegal stuff like offshore accounts and stuff like that. Obviously, you gotta pay your dues, right? That's it. Now, finally, the good news is that just because rich people stay rich doesn't mean that poor people aren't getting rich. Generally, more and more people are being lifted out of poverty as the years go by. So we don't need rich people to become poor in order for poor people to become rich. Although we might, of course, need to address some areas of, you know, inequality of opportunity but anyway that's probably getting too political i don't even know what i think about that so let's just finish the video see you later like my stuff subscribe to my stuff see you later